is it going boys and girls welcome back to Key West Waterman my name is Aaron Young Whew. it is a beautiful Sunday morning down here in Key West um, it's actually my first day off in about a week it's been kind of crazy around here lately we've been doing some home projects and charters and keeping up with the business and all that stuff you know how that goes but um, I woke up this morning feeling kind of motivated I was gonna take the day off well like in the office just doing busy work um, but I woke up kind of motivated and I wanted to share a thought that kind of helped me get to where I am uh, today. In most scenarios, no one's going to hand you your dream life on a silver platter. You're not going to find a listing for it on you know, a job search website. Um, and not all jobs have interviews or college uh, degree requirements. But with that being said, you can go out there and create your dream job uh, on your own in the world. You can create the position. Um, it is doable. I'm living proof of that. Um, I didn't find this life online looking for jobs. It's just kind of something I always wanted to, to do and be and live and uh, kind of just went out there and did it. It took me a while, but it was worth every second. So that's the end of my speech. Um, as you can see behind me, we've got some great weather today. And again, I was going to stay inside and do some office work, but it's too nice out. So we're going to go out. I've got the little boat in the water. I'm going to head out. Nothing over the top. I just want to catch a couple fish to eat for this afternoon. Um, had a recipe I've been craving for quite some time, so I figured I'd bring you guys along. See if we can go catch a fish or two. Spook something big there. Love it. So I'm just, I'm right around the corner from the house. I didn't even go half a mile. And I don't need much, maybe a couple fish, so I'm just gonna throw some lures. Get rigged up and show you what we got. Alrighty, I'm rigged up. So I'm just throwing a little lure called a twitching mullet. More than likely I'm gonna catch barracudas, but that's just fine. I've got some number two wire uh, to a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader, about six feet, and then my main line on the Saragossa 6000 is 15 pound mono. Um, I think I said it, floor, the leader's fluorocarbon. And this reel, or this rod is a, uh, a Travala seven foot medium light. While I was rigging, I had some pretty big swirls up here too, so. Hopefully we get some action. <laughs> that was the first cast. Oh, came a button. Spoke too soon. Spoke too soon. Beginner's luck, I suppose. So these smaller reels, like I said, I've got monofilament on them, um, which typically these 6,000s I'm using for like yellowtailing or something on the reef. And the stretch isn't as big of a deal. When I'm throwing lures, I probably should have braid on here just because when I go to set the hook, um, throwing a lure, you have a lot more stretch. That's probably why I pulled the hook twice already, but it still gets the job done sometimes. All right. They got smart. I'm gonna move down just a couple hundred feet. I 
know you're wondering why I don't have a trolling motor. Whew. Truth is, I had one and it died. And uh, I'm actually having another one of these Ginus built but set up differently. It's just not ready yet, so I haven't replaced the trolling motor. <laughs> Another one came and grabbed this. Ah, careful with those hooks. Perfect. Little barracuda. Too little. Like two or three more inches, buddy. Looks like there's a piece of almost like sunken debris or something right here. so close. Not worth the risk. Not worth the risk. She might be the right one. Oh my god. Three barracudas following it. That looks perfect. Let me double check. Double check my measurement here. That's to be 15 fork length. And a 16 fork length right there. Beautiful. So not a monster, but I've showed you guys eating these in the past. And I always get some kind of oh, I'm going to water. Ah. I always get some kind of slack for it, but I promise you, I have no interest in eating something just for the sake of showing off. I wouldn't be eating them if I didn't enjoy it. So there's the brain method. It's a little different on every fish. For the most part, your brain on a fish is gonna be kind of behind a little bit and up from the eyes. And I normally come in at an angle like that, it just makes it a little easier. So that fish's brain, you can see his nerves going. And now I'm gonna bleed him as always. Right under the gills, there's that little clear membrane, run the knife right under there. I'm gonna get some blood. Just like that. That's, like I said, smaller one, but I will take it. It's still very edible. And barracudas have a bad reputation because I'll admit, they are stinky. They do not smell good. But the smaller ones, I don't eat them normally over about, me personally, 25 inches or so. But I know people that eat big ones, 30, 40 pounders, and they love them. While I'm at it, I'm going to gut it. Get that back to the locals. I 
This is just a live well in here if you're wondering. There we are. Brain bled and gutted. To the ice. My lure and my knot. Let's get back to fishing. Little short. Fourteen and a half. but pretty much twin 16 inch barracudas stinky slimy but delicious that's enough for a meal I'm done back here or done out here rather see you back at the house So before we slice these up, I figured I'd give you a quick update on the yard. A lot of you guys have actually been making comments about it. We've been pretty heavy into home projects. We actually got a gutter installed to avoid all this sludge and mold and other gooey stuff up there. Um, and I don't know if you remember, but if you've watched older videos, you probably realize that the yard looks very different. Maybe I'll throw up some old photos, but we took all of the big giant rocks that were literally all the way to that fence, all the way up front. We, one by one, shoveled loads of them and we put it in the front yard and the driveway, refilled it. 
and we added nice little rocks that we can walk on barefoot that tuna enjoys and pearl tuna loves the grass pearl what are you eating over there and we added grass and it looks magical and it is a lot more pleasant than those big rocks we've got a mango tree kicking and you can also probably tell there, there are a lot more plants Madeline's birthday gift last month was a shopping spree at Mama's Garden, the local nursery, and it looks fantastic. She did a wonderful job. <laughs> Chief landscaping engineer. I like that title. Yeah. <laughs> Tina, you like the grass? We're homebodies, so we're trying to make it as pleasant as possible, but let's fillet some fish. So these are pretty straightforward. Like I said, these are on the smaller side. I'll eat them. I'll eat them to 20, 25 inches sometimes. Common question I always get is, do barracuda have cigatera? And yes, they can have cigatera, but it's fine. Um, they don't necessarily. A lot of fish can have cigatera. I'm not an expert on it, but in my findings, it is just rolling the dice. I've heard people get it from yellow jack, grouper, dog snapper, schoolmasters, barracudas. I think most fish can have it. From my understanding, most fish that eat reef fish. Actually gonna make some fish burgers it's been a while since we've done these but the last time we did it it was with barracuda and it was fantastic so take the flays off I'm gonna take those bones off but because we're not gonna be cooking like an actual fillet I'm actually gonna take a spoon this is gonna be the fish is gonna be diced up anyways I'm gonna take a spoon and get what's left off of this rack and carcass not a ton but there's some on there Take these rib cages out. <laughs> and again, barracuda stinky and slimy. You can see how beautiful and white that meat is. There ain't nothing wrong with it. And something that's interesting on kudos. So this is the this is the tail. This is the head. There's another little bone, and it's not a pin bone. There's another bone that's always at the tip right here. You'll feel it with your finger. I don't know what it is, but I haven't noticed it on another fish. Always strange. Get those pin bones out. And there we are. I'm going to finish this up and we'll make some burgers. Alrighty, we are in the kitchen. So that is our barracuda. All I did was dice that up. Uh, nice and fine, really small pieces. And we're gonna mix some stuff into this and make it, make them like legit patties. They're gonna be actual fish burgers. And it's been so long since uh, we've done this here in the house. I had to pull up Will's YouTube channel to uh, try and remember the recipe, refresh my memory. And I realized he's at 9.91 thousand subscribers. So if you're not familiar, Will's a good friend of mine. He also has a YouTube channel. It's kind of my channel flip-flopped in the fact that it's not as much harvesting but more cooking but the, the reason a lot of my recipes are even edible is because of that guy so if you haven't already go over to his channel and sub hit subscribe uh, we'll get him over 10,000 hopefully but so we've got our barracuda diced um, I'm gonna show you everything that we're gonna add and we're gonna mix all this up and like I said make some patties so I've got uh, 
onion and some green onion in here, scallion, um, just diced up. I think last time we did put some hot sauce, but I'm gonna do diced jalapeno this time. Got some pepper. Garlic salt. A little bit of mayonnaise. A little bit of yellow mustard. You know, you always gotta shake the yellow mustard. Some Worcestershire. Um, one beaten egg. And a little bit of breadcrumb. Wow, that smells good. It smells really good. It's not even cooked yet and it smells good. So I'm just going by visuals here. Will normally does this. I'm gonna add a little more breadcrumb. All the mayo and mustard and egg and breadcrumb is, we're trying to make it nice and sticky so they'll actually stay together like tile grout. Thick. Yeah. You know? That looks pretty good. Oh. Alright, that looks pretty good. Alrighty. Fish burgers. So Cuda now, cakes. Cuda cakes? Yeah. Okay, Madeline says Cuda cakes. So next step, have to put these in the fridge from what Will told me. You gotta put them in the fridge so they set up and they won't break apart when you cook them. I, ideally 30 minutes, at least. Alrighty. So time got away from me a little bit. That was more like an hour. But they look great. And I heated this pan up, but a little too much, so I'll let it cool down for just a second. Just a cast iron. I've got some olive oil in there. What you got over here, baby? I have lettuce, tomato, pepper jack cheese. And we don't really know what like condiment to put on it, so we have chipotle mayonnaise, regular mayonnaise, and ketchup. I don't even think I can't remember if we even put anything on it last I time. I feel like we had the here an aioli. This would be good with an aioli. Remember when we were eating it standing up in the backyard? And everyone was like, "You guys need a table." Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it could be good with an aioli though. Let's see if these are gonna stick together. This is the real test. Flip that over to me a little bit. Actually, I got it. I was, already, I was already in motion. I know. It's hooked to the cabinet. I wish you guys could see this <laughs> ingenuity here. Crank it up, babe. No, you don't want it too hot. So you want it pretty low because your fish has to cook all the way through. Remember, this is raw. The fish needs to cook through without burning. So warm, but not smoking hot. Dang, babe, those look pretty good. Slow and low. Yeah, follow your heart. Alright, this is the moment of truth. This is the culmination of my career of fish burgery. Oh, I broke. Don't go. No. Don't look at that. No, it's good. Don't look at that and one. it's crunchy. Well, I'll take that I one. It. Sorry, Will. I let you down. You have three other shots, babe. Let's try this again. Dang it. Just be confident in the scoop. Flip. Perfect. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Hey, hey what happened? I think it just I think it needed to just cook a little more. <laughs> wow. A little bit of pepper jack cheese. That's actually not so bad. That looks beautiful. I'll give you one of the good ones. Right. Oh. oh no, oh no. Burger down. 
Or this is, I thought you were eating too. Mm, well, maybe. <clears throat> I did end up making a little aioli. It's literally lemon juice, mayonnaise, garlic, salt, and um, mustard. A little bit of little tomato. Twang. <laughs> twang? Right? A little, little Texas twang? <laughs> Um, I'm going to trust you on this. I'm going to go in blind. Wow. I am going to let it cool down this time. Last time I burnt all of my taste buds. Oh, yeah. I forgot about mm -hmm. that. Yeah, it was pretty bad. That was bad. All right. So we just spent like two or three minutes talking to ourselves, eating burgers, because we thought the camera was on and it was not on. But It's a damn good burger. <laughs> that's, our, that's our finished product. Nice and moist. The fish doesn't dry out. And if you do it kind of properly, it holds together like a burger. It's like a crab cake meets a burger. It's really good. Mm -hmm. It's a fish cake. Yeah. But that was my first time trying them. Normally, Will makes them. I'll call it a success. <clears throat> aioli is good, too. The oil, aioli is great. Um, that is all we've got. Mm. We're going to enjoy this. As always, any questions, leave them in the comments. Thanks for listening to my motivational speech this morning. As I said, not all jobs have interviews, and today my job was to be a fisherman and eat some fish. You did a good job, babe. I feel bad. <laughs> we'll see you guys on the next one. Later. Mm-mm-mm. Jalapeno is a good touch. It is.